Hi everyone, it's Tom with the LEC preview of the last week of the LEC Spring Split. We're heading into the final week of the LEC Spring Split playoffs with three teams left standing, Mad Lions, Rogue and G2. So let's look at the series that are going to be played and do some predictions as usual. The only series we know for sure uh, who is going to play is actually the first one. Rogue and G2 face each other once again in the lower bracket finals like they did in the summer split. And I think honestly that it might be pretty close again, although it all depends for me on if G2 actually got a wake up call. Let's look at Rogue first then, because what I think is a weakness for Rogue is also kind of their strength, is that they are very good at consistency in one style. We have seen it throughout the whole split now. We have seen them play the controlled, macro style looking to for place around the map not fighting unnecessarily as hans uh, as larson also said in an interview which i'll link above if you haven't seen it yet you can hear him talk more about this but that's what rogue does right control mage in the mid lane a weak side top side um play around the map funnel gold to hansama and to uh, to larson and then win the team fights later on now that is a style they are unequivocally incredibly good at. I think many people will easily disregard Rogue and say, okay, but they only know how to play one style, so they must be bad. No, they're actually insanely good at playing this. Um, I do think, though, that this is a weakness that they haven't shown more. And I've discussed this as well in my recaps and my thoughts on, on, on the teams. So... I do think that G2 heading into the series has that advantage over Rogue because... Contrary to last summer split where Rogue all of a sudden woke up and, and defeated Mad Lions very well and then against G2 also played different things. I don't see Rogue doing that this split. I think they are going to stick to that predictable scaling style. And even if that is, in theory, the best way to play the game, and I think they, 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 they make a great case for it, right? To play that controlled style. If there is any team that can play a lineup that counters this and take that to a level where even if that style or that 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 strategy on itself is subpar to the control style um, in terms of meta strength and the strength of the champions that require um, to play it um, if any team can elevate that to a level where it can beat rogue it is g2 this team is so multifaceted and so versatile obviously we haven't seen a whole lot of diversity yet, especially from um, from someone like Reckless, right? We saw him on a Karma last week, which he honestly did pretty well. It just didn't work out for the team as a whole. But um, that is something that is maybe the most inflexible role in G2 at the moment. But then again, in the first week or something like this, he also whipped out a Sivir and just said, I'll wing it. So who knows? But what it comes down to is that G2... I think has had all this week to learn from their mistakes against Mad Lions, to study what Rogue does and find multiple different counters to it. So I expect G2 to honestly step it up massively against Rogue. Um, I expect them to read them, not exactly like, I don't want to say like a book, um, but it kind of is, right? When you know what your opponent's going to play. Now, Rogue. If they are able to come up with some new champions um, that maybe G2 doesn't expect, maybe they put Odo Omne in the top lane on a Darius against a Scion of Wunder. You know, maybe they try to spice things up a bit. I could see them um, maybe take two games, but heading into the series, even though Rogue, as I'll say again, is incredibly good at the style they play, they are absolutely a top tier team. I do think that G2 is going to be able to counter it. So I expect the series to be a 3-1 overall. Now, for the next series, obviously, I will first go over Mad Lions versus G2 because that's the matchup I expect to see. But I will also offer my views for a possible uh, Mad Lions versus Rogue series, which in and of itself would be incredibly exciting in my opinion because we haven't ever had in the history of the LEC a finals without either G2 or Fnatic there. And that would be the fourth team overall to make uh, to, to win a championship after G2 and Fnatic 
Got all but one championships. That one went to Alliance. Long time ago already. So uh, it will be exciting from that perspective. But uh, let's just look as if G2 is going to play Mad Lions. So looking at that series, I think that this would probably be the closest series that we'll see in the LEC overall. The G2, assuming they have stepped up and learned a lot from what they did wrong in the first encounter against Mad Lions, obviously in these playoffs, will provide much more in terms of play around the map. And Mad Lions has had all this time to improve, but they were already doing well even more. Now, I've said this multiple times and I'll say it again. Until G2 actually doesn't win a split, I will bet on G2 to win the split. Because time and time again, they may have stumbled, they may have fumbled, they may have looked worse and people thought, oh, this is going to be the split where they didn't win. I think against Fnatic um, last summer split as well, people thought, oh, no, this is this is absolutely going to be it. This is the, the point where where G2 um, loses again to Fnatic in the finals. But they've proven it again and again and again and again and again. So I also expect them to win versus Mad Lions. It is going to be an incredibly close series because I think Mad Lions have shown that they are willing to pivot to new things. I think um, stuff like the Jinx is absolutely something you must ban against um, Mad Lions because they know exactly how to play very well around Karji and elevate him to a position where he just decimates entire lineups with, with, <laughs> with the auto attacks. Um, those kind of champions are absolutely necessary for G2 to ban. I don't think they can afford any luxury if they play against Mad Lions because Mad Lions overall has stepped up so massively. And I've said this again um, in my recap videos that they they have truly flourished. They are now maybe not at their 100% potential, but they're, they, they must be at like 98 of what I think they can do with this lineup at this point in time. Um, given the two new players on the roster and given the st uh, style adjustments they've gone through uh, during the split. So, overall, I absolutely expect this to be a close series if Mad Lions face G2. I do think it would be a 3-2 for, um, for G2 overall, but definitely think that Mad Lions can take uh, two games of G2. They've already taken three in the first match, and um, even with a G2 that is probably... Um, on full mo uh, fire mode and, and, and trying to um, once again establish themselves as the true champions who will always come back stronger after a defeat. Um, I, I still think that Mad Lions is just in such a good shape at the moment that um, they will easily, uh, well not easily, but they, they will in the end prevail um, over, uh, over Mad Lions. And then let's look at the potential versus Rogue. Now... Um, it may sound very easy. Okay, uh, Mad Lions won 3 1 against Rogue in the uh, uh, upper bracket. So Rogue is probably going to lose against Mad Lions as well. And while I do think that Rogue would lose against Mad Lions, I don't think it will be as simple as it was last time. I do think that um, Rogue, compared to their first week where they lost against Mad Lions, Step made big strides um, compared uh, when you compare it to their series against Shokan of Fear. And I also do think that... Um, yeah, I, I think that's just mainly the thing, actually. I think Rogue just didn't look like a team. They weren't uh, a real team. If you hear the feedback from the players in interviews and, and on broadcast interviews, stuff like this, they weren't playing like a team. Originally, and then against Shokan of Fear, were playing much more like a team. They really refound their identity. Their fundamentals were back um, in 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 a way that um, gave them a lot of hope and gave them a lot to build on again in these playoffs. So I do think that against Mad Lions in a finals, I still would say that I probably favor Mad Lions to take the series three to one because of how much they have flourished, but. Um, I think it won't be as one-sided as the original Clash was. So, those are my thoughts heading into the weekend. I'm super excited for it. I hope you were excited as well because the LEC... I really think that these three teams are the true top three teams in the LEC at the moment. And I would be happy to send any of them 
to MSI G2 mostly because of the storylines, if they might play against FPX again or maybe a dumb on gaming or a G2 versus Cloud9, obviously with Perks and Sven on, on the Cloud9 roster who used to play for G2. Um, but I also think that sending a team like Mad Lions or Rogue would be an incredible experience uh, for them and would really help the LEC to um, elevate its level because those teams having international more international experience will only do the LEC much good because these teams will get a lot of practice playing against the top teams and learn a lot of things. So um, from that point of perspective, I'm I would be very excited to see uh, those teams uh, represent Europe. But uh, I'm just going to sit back and, and watch all the action unfold this weekend. Um, super excited for it i hope you're excited for it as well let me know in the comments below what your predictions are i'm always very curious to hear it if you like my content i really appreciate it if you like and subscribe to my channel it really helps me a lot and stuff on my channel you can see the interviews i do i do the previews and the recaps for msi i'm gonna be doing a lot of content so i hope you are interested in this as well um if so again please subscribe it helps me a lot and stay tuned for more content